to order. Mr. Evans. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call on Ms. Best to read our safety instructions. To provide for the safety of those attending this meeting, please listen to the following instructions in case of an emergency. <clears throat> First, please take a moment to note where your exits are. If an emergency arises that prompts us to evacuate, please exit this room and click in order to manage the one of the two exterior doors, one to your right and the other behind you. Once you exit the building, we ask that you safely cross Bramble Street to our parking lot to be safely away from the building. Our staff will help provide additional direction and assistance. In the case of a tornado warning, we ask that you exit this room into the hallway where we will, remain, where we will all remain until we are to exit. In the event of an active shooter in the building, if there is an accessible escape path, please run and try to evacuate the premises. If you can't evacuate, find a place to hide where you are less likely to be found and not in doors that you can. And as a last resort and only if your life is in imminent danger of fight, our staff will provide additional assistance on what to do. Thank you for your attention. Reverend Hyde. Reverend thank you for life, health, and strength for every good and perfect gift you bless us with. Bless our minds and our hearts as we consider the things we do for our county that will serve our constituents and cause them to find a better life. Through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. You have received the minutes for your previous week and your agenda package. In addition, for correction, Mr. Nye. Second. Second. Questions? All in favor, let me know how to vote. Aye. Aye. All opposed? Hearing none, the minutes are approved. Mr. Evans. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Commissioner Webb brought to our attention um, a very special Hitchcomb County resident that I believe you all would like to, uh, to show honor tonight, and that is uh, Coach Sandra Langley. And uh, I didn't know that Mr. Chairman. I want to ask uh, Mr. Webb to the office. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Before I read this resolution in honor of you, Sandra, I want to say uh, Mr. Evans did a great job in drafting this. There's only one thing that I think we may have left out. We didn't give this young man to a husband, Mr. Gerald, quite an honor. We, Gerald, thank, thank you for sharing Sandra. You share <laughs> thank you for sharing, sharing Sandra with us for, for her many years. Thank, thank you and her family. So, so here we go. Whereas the members of Edgecombe County Board of Commissioners believe that all our citizens contribute to the greatness of our county, yet there are some whose service and achievements are notable and worthy of recognition and whereas one such citizen is deserving of honor for exemplary leadership and commitment, whereas Southwest Edgecombe High School girls basketball coach Sandra Langley has been inspiring young ladies to excellence on and off the court for over 40 years, leading her team to eight state championship appearances and winning four state titles. And whereas Coach Lane has set the record for the most wins in girls basketball in 2015 and then reached her 800th career win in December of 2021, now being the winningest female coach in the history of the North Carolina High School Athletic Association. Now therefore be it officially and publicly noted that the Edgecombe County Board of Commissioners hereby gives honor to the leadership and achievements of Coach Sandra Langley. This is the seventh day of March, 2022, signed by our Chairman Leonard Wiggins, attested to by Frankie Mundar. Edgecombe, West Edgecombe, and Southwest. And I like to think it's okay. 
Um, she was my first coach <laughs> at North Edge Gone when they turned all loose and told the cow coach. I was her first one. Oh, right. So I, it's, I'm so proud to see and thank you for what you've done for this campus. Uh, thank y'all too for what y'all do. Thank you for your public service. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm thank you so much. <laughs> Some of those numbers for this presentation, 
and to give it some context, we put the four prior years all uh, numbers beside it, so you got you got to get an idea of trend, etc. So you can see your total fund balance there in the general fund at twenty-three million two hundred eighty thousand. If we go back to sixteen, you see where that number is seventeen point seven million. The unavailable fund balance at five million nine twenty-five. Restricted and committed at fifteen point one million. Total general fund expenditures, including transfers out, was 66551 The fund balance available as a percentage of general fund expenditures is 26.08. This is the fund balance available percentage is the fund balance that you hear from the state, and it's the one by state statute has to be a minimum of 8.33%. Uh, unassigned fund balance is 8,150,000. The unassigned fund balance as a percentage is 12.25%. Revenues over and under expenditures uh, before the financing source of general fund is 1,488,000. The water sewer fund is a negative 456,000, and the solid waste is a minus 1,884,000. And you see cash and accumulated depreciation. The water sewer fund total fixed assets. Is 67 million nine hundred six thousand accumulated appreciation is 15.1 million and cash is 460,000. I will say this <clears throat> even though we show total fixed assets and accumulated appreciation there, what you're really looking for in your water sewer fund or any proprietary fund always is cash flow. You got to have cash flow, etc. You can see where you might have some cash flow versus the prior year, but overall that cash flow should be a concern when you go back over the five years. Cash versus fund balance, the general fund cash is 21,569,000. Other governmentals is 521,000. Water sewer fund is 460,000. And then solid waste is 1,125,000. Fund balance again is 23.2 million. Fund balance other governmental funds is a minus 780,000. Net position of water sewer fund is 38,307,000. And that position solid waste 359,000. You can see your tax rates there and then the collection percentage uh, excluding motor vehicle and uh, including motor vehicle is 94.5 and then the uh, four prior years there. Uh, total property valuation is 3.2 billion total levy amount there and then you see your debt <coughs> uh, breakdown excluding compensated absences and OPEB. You can see for the current year, long-term liability is 49 million, 428. You go back, you can see it's 39 five years ago, but then you see the increases. If you flip over to page six, you see a breakdown of your general fund revenues and a breakdown of your general fund expenditures. I'm not going to read through all those numbers there. <clears throat> if you flip over to page seven, here's where we try to chart and graph some trends. Hopefully that will help. Uh, and understanding a little bit better. You see total fund balance there in blue, and restricted and committed in red, total being the highest it's been at the end of five years presented, and fund balance available as a percentage. And you can see at 26.08, we attempt to show group weighted average there as well, uh, so you get a mechanism or some kind of feel for where you stand versus uh, some of the other uh, counties in your uh, kind of group. On page eight, uh, just in, uh, charting out the analysis of unsigned fund balance and percentage there on the top, and then the analysis of revenues to open under expenditures before transfers on the bottom. <coughs> on page nine, you see the analysis of cash and fund balances and pie charts at the top. Right underneath that, you see the total cash balances at 23 million, the total fund balances at 61 million, 166. And underneath that, you see your debt analysis. <clears throat> Again, excluding compensated absence and OPEP. And see what, where they might be, whether it's general obligation or uh, governmental installment purchases, etc. Now, on page 10, you see your property tax rates versus the group weighted average on the top, and the collection percentages versus the group weighted average on the bottom. On page 11, See a breakdown of your general fund revenues. Uh, Ad valorem tax has been by far the largest at 50.63%. That's why there's so much emphasis on collection percentage, etc., because it plays such a big part in the overall fund balance. On the bottom, you see a breakdown of your general fund expenditures. 
looks like human resources, education, public safety are the top three. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions. One thing I didn't mention is um, two things that will happen starting in June 30, 2021. Um, LPC traditionally, if they had any concerns, they sent out what they call unit letters. With the next audit, they'll stop sending out any unit letters. Your auditor will have a template that they put, the, uh, LGCs actually put together for a presentation like this. We'll uh, present what the LGC is concerned about, and then you'll have a certain number of days, usually about 45 days, to respond to them. The second thing that's coming up, um, not for your June 30, 21, but for your June 30, 22, that you really need to be prepared for is a statement, a county statement called the SBA 7. It's got to do with leases. And it's a nationwide standard, a lot of emphasis being put on it, but basically if you have a lease to or from the county, it's got to be included in the financial statements of the county. So <clears throat> on exhibits one and two for all your governmental funds and then directly on your proprietary funds, it could have a significant impact, but a lot of work has to go into getting that right. And so I encourage you to make sure as you work through some of the things that you put a little effort in that. <clears throat> There's some companies that are specializing in that, and I'd really encourage you to take a look so they can um, help or assist with that. It's a, it's a major undertaking from uh, go to the LTC, talk to them, or any other, <clears throat> you know, like the School of Governments, that they might provide some good advice on that as well. With that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Not just now, but if you take the audit home, you read through it, you've got questions, you're welcome to call the office if I happen to be out. I'll give you my cell number. I'll do my best to get you an answer. Any other questions, Mr. Thompson? So thank you for your time. We have to put in this because it's pretty long. Um, and we look forward to having it on the third day. Thank you. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, if I could say a word before he steps out, oh, 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 oh. I just want to thank him and his team. Uh, you know, when. Uh, they responded to our request for proposals, and we sat down and, and talked with them. They're fully aware of the tremendous amount of work we had before us to get these audits caught up. And, um, and Mr. Thompson, you know, ensured us that he had the resources on his team to be able to work at such a fast pace. And he's absolutely kept his word. They've been great to work with. We certainly appreciate um, getting to know uh, him and his team members. Uh, you know, certainly, as you know, we have uh, we have findings, as, as he mentioned, that some of those have already been corrected. The rest of those processes are in place to correct those moving forward. We're glad to see, as you all have, uh, you know, pay a lot of attention to our fund balance. Our unassigned fund balance, as he mentioned, has rebounded from a little over 8% uh, in FY19 to a little over 12%. So, though we still have a lot of work to do, I think you can see some positive progress. And again, I just want to say thank you to Mr. Thompson and his team for the work they're doing for us. Thank you. Yes, sir. I appreciate it. Moving on. Uh, next, we're going to call Michelle Edward. I don't know if we're going to give you your uh, monthly input. Good evening. Good evening. No. So, just wanted to report that we're still just a little over 13,000 cases since the beginning of the pandemic, and as we talked about last time, this is one of the reported cases now that we have the home test. The group still most affected continues to be white women aged 25 to 49, and if you look at the daily case averages, you can see that we have started to have um, a significant decline in our cases, and we are on the right track there. So, of course, sad to report that we have 139 deaths since the start of the pandemic. Um, the state currently has us at 141 deaths. Um, two of the deaths that were reported have now been retracted to not be a COVID death. They just haven't updated on the state system. So, we're currently at 139 deaths in Edgecombe County. Looking at COVID vaccines. 54% of people vaccinated with at least one dose. 50% are vaccinated, vaccinated now with two doses or at least one dose of J&J. &J. Um, last time we had talked about um, they were looking at uh, 
CDC and FDA were looking at vaccines for ages six months to four years old that have still been postponed. They're still doing more research on that and no updates so far on where they stand for that age group. Um, some elements looking at boosters. People who initiated vaccination were J&J, &J, Johnson & Johnson. Vaccines should receive a total of three doses. So if you're someone who got your um, first J&J, &J, they now want you to follow it up with an additional dose of the mRNA, which would be Pfizer or Moderna, and then to get a booster at least two months after you get that second dose. So anyone who started out getting just one shot of J&J &J now will need three shots. And for those who are immunocompromised, they should receive a booster dose three months after their third dose for a total of four doses. So I know there's been some questions about, you know, we're supposed to get our four, getting four doses. And I think the confusion is that is for immunocompromised individuals. They are to get three doses plus a booster. So that's where the fourth dose comes in. Um, and looking at masks, we are still distributing masks um, out to the community. Um, Port Health Services had contacted us and offered to provide us more masks for the community. So they'll be distributing about 3,300 more masks to the health department to distribute to the community. Um, that will be at both locations in Rocky Mountain and Tarboro that individuals can pick up masks. And they're the N95 masks. Any questions? Any questions? Comments? Um, I just wanted to know, um, did the uh, superintendent of our school system talk with you as head of the health department before they made their decision about making uh, masks not mandatory anymore? We had not had a conversation. Um, I believe they were, there was a state call with the um, Department of Public Instruction and the state. Um, and so I believe all the superintendents and health directors attended that, but we did not have on one conversation about that. Another, another question for Tom. Where are we on the CDC ranking as far as low, medium, high? So I think we're right? Well, there was some confusion. Um, Mr. Evans and I were looking at that earlier, uh, or actually in last week. Um, so that on one of the diagrams, it's showing you know most of everyone red. They're showing the edge of the family red. But then when you go to another screen, it says we are medium. And actually, an email came out today to the health director saying that there is some discrepancies and they're working on that. But they did not class, you know, tell us where we fall. So we're still waiting to hear are we in the red or are we in the orange. So our so. county was there was discrepancies on our county. And it doesn't matter. It was just before I came. Right. Uh, they were saying that we were in the, I think, in the orange. Uh, they listed the counties that were in green. Was it the yellow? Was that the yellow? Yellow, orange, red. I, I think it was, no, we were in yellow. Oh, yellow. Which raises another question. Right. I make the motion that we remove the mass mandate. But, 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 let me hold that, if you might, just a minute. I got a motion and second. Oh, can I hold your second? Can I hold that just a minute? Okay, just a minute. In terms of at least asking uh, Mr. Evans in terms of what your thoughts on what they just said. Yeah, so, and as, as Ms. Bedford said, you know, the weekly reports that I've been sending you all for almost two years, I show you uh, in that what the CDC has been publishing as their uh, county level transmission data. And they were graded as high, substantial, and I forgot what was below that. Most of North Carolina, as most of the U.S. has been in red, high for a long time. And so under that, it says that wearing masks indoors is recommended. They also now have a slightly different, uh, I guess, uh, system that doesn't look exactly at all the same information. I mean, this, as Michelle mentioned, you go to the same CDC website, two different pages. In fact, I think I shared with you in, in your update in your packet. They also have another way of looking at it they call the community level. And at that, it's showing Edgecombe County as being medium. 
And so it says that it recommends that a person at high risk a severe illness should talk to their health care provider on whether to wear a mask as, as a precaution. So that is conflicting information. <clears throat> We've been trying to be consistent in you know what we've done here, what we've recommended to you based on that information. You know, obviously the case numbers have, have come down considerably. And so right now it's difficult for us to rely on or to reference the CDC as, as a point of what how we should make a decision. But you're a full in terms of what we kind of math my case as a is that correct? Yes sir. Well would your thoughts be uh, to we could go to Austin, would you have and you have you talked with the I'll have the right to tell you your thoughts on that option. Well I would suggest that if the board is in, in a place where you want to make a change, I suggest that we at least make it make them optional in our buildings and encourage people to wear them. With the board, and I think that and the reason I said I think we need to, if we make a motion to to uh, uh, undo the mandate, I think we have taken that authority from the, the management, and it's something that we can't undo. But I think if he has a willing to make it optional, it leaves the authority with him. And if it's something that's coming up and he and the health director think that something needs to be done, the authority remains there, would, would you, could you all agree to that? Well, I just wanted to be official that I personally made a motion to drop the mask mandate. Well, yeah, I mean, I would make most probably all. You want that? The board, the board wants to make it. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I'm fine for County manager wants to make that policy change. I'm just stating my position. Well, and, and, I, and I think if he's willing to make that, I feel you. I just don't think the board needs to take an authority from from the manager that we need that that he needs the flexibility to do. But mm -hmm. I, I hear the board, and what is good? What is it? What is the good? Sir? If you want to make that motion, on. I make. I did make a motion. I'm okay. sorry. The motion is to uh, uh, undo the mask mandate. We have a second question. All in favor of it, I vote to aye. Aye. All in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. Oh, in favor of the motion. All opposed, please raise uh, The target remains with you. And what would be your call now? Then I would suggest that starting a week from today that we change it to being option or recommended. And now, we're, and that is for the public coming into these buildings, right? That's correct. And as well as our staff. As well as our staff. And, and, and I, the reason I suggest a week from today, I think it gives us an opportunity for any kind of clarification that we get, we can get from the state on what the CDC is, is published. I just wanted to be prepared to, um, we've got some sick people in Edgecum County that work for you in all these buildings. So I just want us to make sure that we're making the right decision because I feel, and I've already heard from some employees who are going to have a problem. I sit across a cubicle from somebody. I'm sick. My mom is really sick. Now you're going to tell her she doesn't have to wear a mask. She goes everywhere, comes back to work. I just wanted to be prepared. Sure. Well, I mean, this certainly does not take away from each individual employee and citizen, uh, you know, making decisions for themselves. I mean, it's still it's still in place that you know, if if you have symptoms, certainly if you've been in contact with someone, if you have any concern about your personal health, you, just, you still have the opportunity to wear a mask. Another comment or question. I want to be considerate of employees that may have problems that you can directly take care of. Have we done anything as far as, uh, I know those cubicles are pretty tight. Have we done anything since we've been wearing masks or anything to alter that, to put a shield up or anything? Like, but you're talking a person sitting right there. It's not like you've got somebody away from you. You're talking about a person sitting right there without a mask. So help, did we do anything? Well, you know, when you're sitting, when you're sitting at the cubicle, there's the cubicle itself. That's a barrier between you 
and the person sitting in next to you. Uh -uh, I'm talking about the person that's coming into that office of that person. This, okay, here's the staff person, here's the client, right there. Mm -hmm. So have we done anything to other than that? I don't think they really meet cubicles anymore. I think they can. <coughs> yeah, they have uh, uh, area. Yeah. rooms where, where they meet. A lot of rooms, that's right. Okay. I think it, it goes back to the individual. How we, if we've got those symptoms, we need to make sure that we protect our protect those around us and the public. Okay, it's back. It's a trust. It's a trust area in international care. And and I'm ready to take my mask off. Okay, I wanted to do it now so I could take it off, but he didn't. Okay, so so uh, I'm trying. You can take yours off. I'll keep mine on. Well, that's for me. So when I come back to me, I'll probably won't have mine on. Okay. that called his son up. I've not met him, so I don't believe he's in the room. <clears throat> Other than that, I don't have anyone else who signed up to speak. Is there anybody in, in the room for a petition? Hearing not, we won't go to this first. Yes, sir. Item A is uh, regarding budget amendments. And as you see, there are a number of budget amendments in there. I do want to uh, draw your attention to a couple of them. Number seven. See budget amendment number seven, which is for uh, sheriff's office. This is receiving grant fund allocated from the North Carolina Department of Public Safety for enforcing the law. Um, this is a grant that was actually received um, previously in the last fiscal year. We received that, so what you see is appropriating revenue from general fund um, that is for the sheriff's office. Uh, also, number Eight. As you heard Mr. Thompson uh, speak earlier about the lottery funds that we receive, uh, they actually go directly to the school system. You all vote, and I think we brought one to you not too long ago. When they have a project that qualifies for those lottery funds, you have to vote to approve um, that, and it goes to the state, and it goes directly to the school system. However, uh, as we now know, we do have to budget that here, so you'll see that that is appropriating um, a million dollars for the state lottery funds for the school system for this current fiscal year. So this is what we have not been doing. That's right. <coughs> so we're good. This is the right about That's right, because we thought that since it went directly to the school system, we did not have to budget, but we do, and we have to track that. But the money goes to the school system. It goes to the school system. Motion for approval. So moved. Questions? All in favor of that, no matter what kind of eye. All opposed, carrying the nine. It is approved. Next. Um, item B is regarding the health department fee schedule. You'll see that there is a recommended change to the health department's fee schedule. Um, this is um, related to uh, vaccine, COVID vaccine administrative fees, which the allowable, the allowable billing uh, rate has increased from $40 to $65. And again, this is just for the administration of the vaccine, which we charge Medicaid or to private insurance companies. And also, uh, Medicaid is allowing us to make this retroactive to April uh, 1st, 2021. So this has been before the Human Services Board, and they voted to recommend this to you for your approval. All in favor of the number of votes are high. Aye. All opposed. We are not in approval. Item C. Uh, Presented for your consideration is change order number two for the contract with Siemens Industries Incorporated. The original contract was for the fire alarm system upgrade in the county administration building and courthouse. Change order number one added additional components for the basement of the courthouse, which were left off the original bid. Change order number two, which would take the contract over the $50,000 limit I am authorized to approve as the upgrade of the system in EMS station 300. This change order will increase the contract to 55120 No additional funds are needed as this was budgeted in our current year CIP. Therefore, I recommend that you approve the change order as presented. Motion. Second. 
Bo. Also, Mr. Chairman, will point out last month you had to a presentation on an opioid crisis and you asked a few questions. Um, and so, uh, Michelle and her team have uh, provided you some additional information in your package. We won't go over tonight, but it's, it's there for your review. Okay. And so you have uh, the usual um, uh, economic indicators report that I provide each month. Also, uh, regarding our parks and recreation plan updates, you know that you adopted a plan some months ago. We're working towards that. I want to introduce to you tonight Ms. Jennifer Field. Um, you, you will remember um, Yvonne Murphy, who worked with the Barford Extension for uh, a number of years have been sort of our point person with our parks and recreation efforts, and uh, she retired some months ago. She was working under a grant program from the State Department of Health and Human Services. That grant was extended, and so they allowed us to uh, to fill that role uh, that Ms. Murphy was providing for us. And so, after um, you know, through some search and interviews, what happened? We are happy to have. Ms. Jennifer Fields, uh, she works with us. She actually uh, is employed for a temp agency uh, for the state, but she's working with us here in our office, and she's off to a great start. Been with us a couple weeks now. Yes, sir. February 21st. All right. And so uh, we have kicked off this year's recreation mini grant program. So she's uh, been involved in that, getting that request for proposals out, and lots of other things that she's working on. So I wanted to introduce you. To her tonight. Anything you want to say to me? Um, to Chairman Wiggins and the Edgecombe County Commissioner, I would just like to thank Mr. Evans and Ms. Bess for allowing me the opportunity to serve as your physical activity and nutrition coordinator. Thank you. And also, just want to uh, remind uh, the board of your uh, retreat on March the 21st uh, at 9 a.m. We'll start the meeting at 9 a.m. We'll have want to get there early we'll have some breakfast for you at around 8 30. Um, we'll start at nine o'clock and also before i forget i tend to do this when we uh, come out of closed session we will recess tonight's meeting to reconvene at your retreat and that's all i have mr chair that's a chair make sure the campaign that's not on the agenda every seat attendance is like to talk to the manager about it you know back into commissioners chambers I know we have to give notice 30 days um, so I will make that recommendation that motion that we resume meeting in our chambers next meeting Like everything else, the budget that uh, they're running by the budget. So, 
uh, our conservatives you should know that the winner, it, 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 they say they're coming. The, the other thing I would like to bring up in regards to the citizens' comments is, uh, I, I don't have to say this, you will all agree when I do mention this, that uh, litter just seems to be abounding everywhere, exponentially. Uh, I, I guess one of, one of the causative factors of what I'm seeing is, you know, when you've got two bridges out in the county coming from the south end, there's only a couple of highways that you're going to have to take coming from the Maxfield Pine Top to St. Louis area. And, and maybe it's just because it's more traffic coming through there, but I've never seen so much litter in all my life. Uh, following that comment, I've got to say uh, a concerned citizen called and said that they found uh, several bags of uh, garbage on their property. Uh, they looked through the garbage and found a name on a medicine bottle. Uh, here comes a concern, and I wish the sheriff was here to address this. Uh, uh, they did not speak with Sheriff Clee, but they were told that just because they found trash with an envelope or a medication bottle with a name, that they would do their best to speak with the individuals and attempt to get them to come take the trash. Well, I think sometimes the response that the Sheriff's Department is getting is that, you know, I hired somebody else to take my trash out. I, I don't know how, you know, I'm not trying to interfere with the Sheriff's Department uh, office and their duties and responsibility, but we've got some citizens that are just simply concerned that, so you're telling me the person can bring trash to place on my property and I'm at the mercy of the world as to where the hot person comes and removes it, and there's, there's basically no penalty. So I, I'm just bringing that up as something for us to think about if, if there's an ordinance we need to enact, or how are we, I'm just bringing it up. That's it. I, I was going to ask the same thing because I had a concerned citizen who lives over the Princeville area, well, just outside. Concrete Road with old concrete building that he's called before and the folks are still leaving trash right there by their house and what they know is there can we put signage up or uh, some kind of light or what I told him I would bring it to you I had no idea but he said he had complained about it before and uh, the folks came and got it up but he said it's still happening right over there on the uh, concrete road. But isn't it, isn't it against the law to discard trash? It is. If you get caught, it sounds like if you get caught, it doesn't matter now. So, Mr. Mayor, if you don't see them, do it. You can't prove it. Yeah, that, that's it. That's what we've been told. If you, if you don't see the person place it there, good luck. I can kind of prove that I'll put my garbage in my container and could drop off the trash can. <laughs> and, 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 and it will go off. It will, it will get off. We find any control. Not in the fact that I'll see them. Well, well, like a bear field. Well, uh, that's kind of hard to throw back. Yeah, that's the person that came to me. That's the problem. It won't walk the roadside. People tell them to But anyway, it's yeah. probably going to take a general tax order in terms of, uh, uh, but I'll only, I, I guess, I would just say it's a little bit of a problem. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, but do we have any kind of ordinance like that about well, that? Well, I think. You have something on the books that's enforcement. Yeah. It's, in, it's the enforcement of it. You know, there are state laws about littering, um, but the, the difficulty is enforcing. As, as, as you brought up, it's, it's, a, it's certainly a challenge. You know, we, we get calls from time to time with concerned citizens, and I, and I understand. It. You know, it's uh, it's real easy to dump. It. It's very hard to, to, to clean it up. Our staff is very busy, you know, out on the country road. I, you know, I know they've been out there a few times. Um, when we get calls about, you know, that there's a, a lot, of, whether it's couches or a lot of bags, you know, our staff from uh, from uh, South Waste Department they'll go out and clean it up. And then the areas where there's just an accumulation of roadside litter, we put that on our list for our cleanups that that uh, Gloria Mosley organizes. In fact, you, you helped one a few weeks ago. 
would appreciate that. So it, it's an ongoing problem. Unfortunately, it's, it's difficult to find a good solution for it, honestly. People don't care. Do we have the authority that we can level, uh, levy a fine to someone who is caught in the act of littering? I know you see that on the roads, but that may be a state. It may be a state and county. Usually a violation of our ordinance also has the ability to enforce it with a fine. Because I would suggest we put cameras up at the major intersections throughout the cam uh, county. We hire staff to monitor those cameras and review them. We find the people who actually throw out trash and we use that income to pay for the people to look wash the cameras. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Probably so, yeah. they not putting them in the van. No, they put them down there about me. Yeah. But they're they're like, they're like, they're like, they're like, interchanges like the Tarver interchange or QVC interchange in Kingsboro just to get started. And then when you got a problem like what we're talking about in principle, you actually maybe could put some camera systems up that are mobile and then monitor that area. And if you're catching people, find them, use the money to pay for the cameras and pay for the labor to watch the cameras. You don't have to have monitor 24-7. Review the film when you see it happening. Boom. You know. well, sure. I mean, that's the same as somebody rock running through a red light and all of a sudden they get a traffic ticket sent to them in the mail. Well, sir, please. We're not going to ever stop people doing it until they feel the pain. Find the other thing I had, sir. Um, can you give us an update about all across this county? I do a lot of traffic. These bridges that they've started working on, and I don't see nobody on anymore. <laughs> uh, like the one on 97. I mean, we can't get from the church to the school. You've got to go all the way, seven miles around the other way to get there. And but we've been noticing people are disregarding the blockade and going around and I'm afraid there's going to be an accident because they don't want to go the long way. Have we had any update on when they plan to finish these bridges? Because I'm ain't going, I was going to a church past Whitaker. That bridge is being fixed. So then I had to figure out how to get around that. And, um, and excuse me, before you ask the her, I, I get bombarded about the one on 111. Right. That the company is no longer there. And I know we, we're not DOT, but I can't tell you how many times I've almost been assaulted at church. <laughs> and I can imagine I go to school, but the school is right there. But the buses can't go 97. They got to go all around the children like, and then on that road, we have a head-on collision because big trucks are having to come around that little road, ran right into a neighbor right there near the stop sign. So they're, you know, they're asking me, like, I'm at church, when y'all gonna fix that road? Because that's how we beat the church. <laughs> Somebody even used that as an excuse to couldn't get to church because the bridge was out. I'm glad, but it really is funny. I mean, it's really a serious matter. You've got lots of concerned citizens to see no work going on there. Yeah. And no, no people there. Sometimes just a yes, no, maybe so. Maybe so not working anymore. They right. know, are they coming to fix it? Or is it going well, to we'll have to continue with it another year? What right. would be? Well, I will certainly get an update. I would imagine those three bridges, I think it was, where the contractor walked off the job, yes. it will probably be a little while because now DOT has got to go back through the process, mm -hmm. figure out what was left to be done, with, and bid that out, I would imagine. To get it done. But either way, I will, I will reach out to DOT to see if they can provide us with an update. The, the company went bankrupt, had to post the bonds, and the money's there complete, but they'll have to go through the whole process again. Uh, and I, I understand from some contacts, DOT contacts, that the 258 bridge, uh, should, the target date is April 1st. But that would really be nice if we had an official so spot that would give the citizens an update right. as to, so they would kind of know. Yeah, absolutely. That's I'll reach out to our local folks. Any other comments on the region? I just got one for the match. Are we at the end of the road on the EMS station? So station two is done, they're back in there, and I forget the numbers. The two other stations that still are next on the list for the mower remediation, okay. which is already budgeted, that work is getting ready to start. He, uh, he has not gotten back with us. We had the uh, matrix come out and do a reevaluation since it's been over a year. They didn't find much else than the first report. We've given that to uh, Angel Construction, ACI. 
and ACI is reviewing that report, which we just got back a week and a half ago, and to make sure that he doesn't have it, not any more money he got to spend. We had two left, is that what it was? Yes, sir. Yes, three or four. I was just and, and there was not as much in those two as there was in number two. Can you remind me, District 5 water sewer system? Where's the area? No, I'm sorry. No, that's District. <coughs> district 5 is. Yeah, Lake. Lake up all the way up to Woodford. Lake up to Woodford. I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. I do want to remember talking about roads may reminded me. You'll remember uh, Mr. Ellis came a couple months ago with the request about naming uh, the intersection handy corner. Um, so uh, we've got that, that ball rolling. There's an application that has to be submitted to DOT, which he completed. Um, I sent that in to DOT. They're reviewing that. Once they review it and determine if it looks like something eligible under their guidelines, they'll let us know, and then you will be asked um, to approve an official resolution. You, you voted that night to, um, to support it but there will be an official resolution. So just wanted you to know that that was in the work. Any other questions? Hearing none, I'm trying to support it. Hearing none, I'm ready to do it at this time. We'll be going to a closed session to discuss economic development. Is that motion to go to closed session? So moved. Second. Question. All in favor, let me know my vote down. Aye. Aye. All opposed. Hearing none, we'll be going to closed session.